always get that feeling that you, you know when you travel and you like feel like you've forgotten something. Yeah. Always get that feeling, but then I always think, oh, as long as I've got my footy boots, that's all that matters. Yo, Sharon. You, you with Brownie? Yeah. Alright, sweet. Okay, we'll, we'll see you soon. Hey. Would you just look at that? Would you just look Would at just it? Look at it. Last time we played Brisbane up here, we lost, didn't we? Feb kicked those freaky goals. Yeah. Shouldn't have lost that game. And then, they'll, like, Brisbane didn't beat another team for like 12 weeks. More than 12 weeks. And then we ended up winning, they were like touted as the worst team, and we ended up winning the grand final. Weird. Okay, so we just landed here at Brisbane Airport after a two hour flight. You know, lucky it's not made of um, carpet here like in Perth because it's quite embarrassing when Butters makes us do stretching and you know get on our backs and do all different sorts of yoga poses. Yeah, really good. No yeah, I feel really fresh. Yeah. Okay. We're uh, as soon as we get our bags, we're going straight to the gap to, to our last training session and then hydrate and keep eating. Spread it to the corners. And then you do the, the old mum trick. Hey presto. Every time we come in interstate trips we're always meeting supporters. They're either, you know, they're always waiting for us as soon as we hop out off the plane and they come to training, which is fantastic. And yeah, you, you're always surprised who you, you meet and lucky enough to meet uh, Bob Irwin. Good. Bob, nice Good. to meet you. Nice to meet yeah. you too. You've come for three hours, have you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah about a three and a half hours. Yeah. But I, I, I've been following him following, following since I was seven years old. That's really? 65 years ago. So, gee, so you were, but obviously you were, so you were from up here, or...? No, no, I was in the Dandenong. Dandenong, OK, that yeah, explains it then. Yeah, I lived yeah. down here for a long time. Nice. But, uh, How yeah. long have you been up here for? Oh, mm, probably 30 years, 40 years yeah. now. So yeah. Collingwood remained the same. Yeah. It always remained the same. And I can I can remember way back to to the days when Thorold Merritt and those sorts of boys, which is long before your time. Yeah, that's right. They still, they still get around the club. Yeah, yeah, which is which is really, really yeah. nice. And, uh, and it must be, for you guys, it must be a real honour to pull on that It is, like, yeah. Especially you know, when you go to your locker and you see the names that have played before yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's amazing. And, and, and Collingwood have been such a proud club for almost as long as I can yeah. remember, you know. Yeah. Amazing football club. We uh, really appreciate you coming down here. No it's worries, nice, mate. nice to meet you, mate. Terrific. All right, okay. Excellent. Thanks, Thanks a lot. This is the best training session um, the day before the game. All the players will agree with you. The ball, you know, the skills are normally right up there, short and sharp. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's it, the most enjoyable session. Yeah, I, I love playing at the Gabba. It reminds me of, um, I don't know, it's, it, it's a, bit of, a bit like a Coliseum. Yeah, really looking forward to, to playing and you know, I'm personally feeling really good, ran, ran out the session really well, so you know, hopefully that, that um, turns into a good game. After a short bus trip we're from the Gabba, we finally arrived here at the Stanford Plaza. This is one of uh, my favourite hotels that we get to stay at. I don't room with anyone, as most of the senior boys don't, we, we choose, we like to have our own space. Have a look at that. Doesn't get much better than this. Very lucky. Get to stay at beautiful places like this and play football. I 
after a big meal and uh, loading up for tomorrow to give me plenty of energy. I'm ready to go back up to my room. Got to keep staying hydrated, one of the most important things to do. and It's easy to, to fall away when you travel interstate from, from your normal routine, but you've got to keep it as normal as possible. So I've, you know, I've got a few supplies here and I'm ready to go up and probably end up watching a movie. Um, and you just kick back and get ready for the big day tomorrow. We know with Cloakey, he gets off to a fly with a straight kick, he's going to be in for a big night. Well, he's been pretty accurate this year with 15 goals, 8, and that's a fine start. And it'll do. It's a goal. Collingwood have got two on the board. Mount nicely. But there's a lot of traffic around here. Nice work from Clark to get it through. Side bottom. We know he can sniff out a goal from most places. And that is no exception. Now again, set up very well, Swan and a number of others. Doing him favours for his teammate. Wellingham oh, no. got up and got Sinclair away. Who runs in and kicks another one. That's four. Dropped off Brown and pushed over to the contest. To O'Brien and Yagmore now. The release to the top of the square. Swan it up and over the top is Goldsack, who finds himself as a, as a forward at the moment. And, just, and he squeezed that one through. All right. The game about to come to its conclusion. And it does. And the Collingwood fans rise as one to salute the 58 point victory here. Nothing more satisfying than winning away from home. For myself, yeah, I was pretty pleased with the way that I played. I, again, just like I think it was um, synonymous with the team. I, everything that I set out to do, um, I was able to do. So that was really pleasing. Um, and I, again, just that just comes through. Just sticking to a, a simple process. You know, just just keep it simple. Uh, you know, that's that's the key to, to playing league football, I guess. Keeping it simple and following the process, I'll, I'll get a lot of co personal confidence from, from that performance. Still to come on the club. Well, Brian's coming back. Oh, oh, oh no. You yeah, hope not. But we'd run across the parklands there over the bridge at Merry, Merry Creek there. 
go through the toilet. There was a toilet down the back end. You didn't have to pay. They never fixed the hole for just the kids. You'd get oh, through yeah, kids. Right. Adults couldn't get through it, but us kids could climb through it. Well, you haven't seen a sure do that before. Oh, what? <laughs> we generally bring our best player in the press conference, but Peter wouldn't let me go. He wants you to ask about his mark. <laughs> Someone ask about that. Someone ask, come on. <laughs> mark the year, Let's hope so. <laughs> do you get a car these days, or...? Keith, you get half of it, then. Keith, you tried to spoil me. I wasn't happy about that. Okay. Nothing better than seeing one of the Collingwood players take a hanger. Of course, a very cheeky Heath Shaw there, but probably nothing worse than seeing one of the Collingwood players go down. And a man who joins us in the studio tonight, Brownie, you had us all very worried there for a while. Just talk us through the incident and, uh, and what you thought as soon as it happened. Yeah, well, uh, pretty simply, uh, uh, all I felt was a, a massive knee in the ribs and, and then I sort of got hit over and, and then heard my knee crack twice. And uh, yeah, and I got down. And initially, I was very, I was very winded from the knee, and I was in a bit of pain from that. And Maxie said, grab me, and said, get up, come on, get up, get back on the mark. And and then um, once I heard the crack, I, I, I knew that I'd, I'd done something to my knee, and I, I was calling to the doctors and trainers and saying, get out of here quick. Uh, were you a little bit uh, upset with Harry O'Brien? He looked like he was very worried looking at the vision from the game. He uh, was he upset? Did he say anything to you after the game? Yeah, well, uh, initially I, I didn't know whose knee that was that come in and made me go real awkward, but um, I found him at uh, half-time and, and he looked very distraught. I, I grabbed him quickly and I said, mate, you've got a job to do. Let's get it done. Let's get a win. Um, it's no one's fault. Um, ten times out of ten, I'd expect one of my teammates, one of my defenders to do that, come over the top and crash the pack. So um, that's one of those things that's happened. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy he, he did that because I'd expect that from him, to jump over and crash the pack and do the team thing. Did you fear the worst when, when the incident happened? Uh, yeah, I did. I, I did. Um, it's, well, when I did my ACL, I heard a massive crack. And um, obviously when I did my kneecap, I heard a big crack then too. But to hear the two cracks in the knee this time and, and to look down and, and see it go out awkwardly, yeah, I, I did fear the worst. And, um, but as soon as I went down into the change rooms, the, the doc checked it all out and, and checked the ACL and he assured me that it was fine. So it was a massive relief. You got the initial prognosis from the medical staff and they thought it was okay, but you had to wait until Monday to go in and get that scan. What did you do in that time and, and how were you feeling waiting for that result? Yeah, well, I've learned. Uh, when I did my ACL, uh, I was able to run off the, off the ground and, and um, actually do, it, do some squats and do that kind of thing. And, and the doc checked it out and um, they wouldn't give it to me straight that I'd done my ACL until I'd got a scan. So I, I'd learned from that that... Uh, I'd make no, um, no, no thing if I, I'd done it or not until I'd got a scan. So uh, I had to wait until Monday morning to get that. And, uh, but Sunday, a good 24 hours of just stewing on it, it wasn't, it wasn't too good. And uh, how did you feel once you actually got the result? Did you get that down at the club? Yeah, I got, had the scans done at, um, at another place and I, I got driven to the club and I walked, walked down there and all my teammates were around and um, just wishing me all the best and, and all that kind of stuff and I walked into the room and um, Dave Butterfant was there and Jeff Walsh and, and the doc were all in there so it was, it was a fairly, fairly big deal and, and I, I had a lot of butterflies and I was very nervous and um, it's funny, I, uh, I walked in there and, and it was up on the screen already, the, the MRI and, and I, I'd see, I saw... Uh, without the doctor any, saying anything, that there's like a thing that looked like a ligament that was snapped in half and it was in the middle of the knee. So initially my, my heart sank and I was like, oh, I've done my ACL. But um, straight away the doctor turned to me and said, great news, um, you've only strained your medial and, and you'll be right to go in, in two to four weeks. So that was a massive relief and, um, yeah, something I, I, I was just so thankful for. Well, that's great news for everyone, especially yourself. Well, uh, stick around till after the break. We've got the cats on Friday night. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Stick around, up next on The Club. Well, today we've got the top shelf. The enforcer, the great man, Murray Wiedemann, 1958 captain of the Premiership side. And Muzza, we're back at Victoria Park. What great memories. Well, this is where it all began. <laughs> it did begin for you. Oh, I can remember. They've done a great job on it, haven't they? They've put it in the condition now because I can remember playing out there when there was mud about that deep <laughs> and with my 13 size boots and 13 stops in it I could hardly run. Well, tell us about those young days when you were only a, a nipper and you came to Victoria Park. 
Yeah, there's a group of us, about five of us, young, young kids, and our parents had let us only go to Collingwood. We wouldn't go to any other grounds because we <laughs> probably wouldn't have made it home. But we'd run across the parklands there, over the bridge at Merry, Merry Creek there, go through the toilet. There was a toilet down the back end. You didn't have to pay. <laughs> they never fixed the hole for just the kids. You'd get oh, through. Yeah, kids right. you, adults couldn't get through it, but us kids could climb through it. So that saved sixpence, see? They were great days, but this was the love of my life, this club. Now, Murray, uh, 1953, you sort of told you're not good enough in 52. You go away, do some things. 53, you play in the thirds, the seconds, and then a premiership side. That, that's unheard of. And I won the seconds best and fairest. In so, the same year? Yeah, in the same year. <laughs> so I had a good year, let's put it that way, and you topped it off with a premiership. Yeah. <laughs> Fair year, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Really, the next highlight is your year is 58. Yeah. Uh, to win that was really was unbelievable uh, to win that because we we did we had a, a fair side, but we only in those 10 years or 11 years I played with Colling, we only beat Melbourne twice. Yeah. Once in 56, we beat them by about five points just uh, in this on this ground here, and we beat them in the grand final. Ron Barassi, and I know you know Ron well, but Ron Barassi was a great player. Mm. Booker Harrison was given that job. There wasn't anything underwater about what he was told to do, was it? Was no, he? Or just no. being the gate? That was just as, as, as I said to Hooker when we changed over at quarter time, I said to Hooker, like, there's about 120,000 people here that they counted everybody. And I said, we, we, we got killed by 11 goals the, the week, yeah. the fortnight before. So I said, let's do something. And that's all I said to Hooker. Well, he did something. He, put a big split over Ron's eye, I think, <laughs> and uh, I took a couple of blokes out I didn't like. Yeah. Uh, oh, you just, and then, you then, do that then, then what happened, all the army of Melbourne blokes wanted to knock Hooker and I out. And, and they that's, lost the they plot. Fell, That's right. Uh. They fell for the, uh, the old game that uh, Collingwood do, go out and belt someone. And I said, now, you blokes just play football. Don't yeah. worry what Hooker and I are doing. We'll handle that heavy problem. Fon's kind. You had him through your whole career at Collingwood. You see, uh, you see coaches going ballistic in yeah. the coaches' boxes these days. Tell us about Fonz Kine and just what, what would he say to you before a game? Fonz Kine never got. He'd go. It was mainly he spoke about tradition. Yeah. The old Collingwood spirit and all that. There was nothing. No uh, strategy or. Never had a meeting. My 11 years <laughs> at Collingwood, I never had a meeting with any coach. First, seconds, or thirds. Uh, no one ever came to me and told me how to play football. But it's like if the runner did come back and he said, Murray Fonskine wants you to do something, I'd say, well, you go back and tell him. Uh, but he said, I can't do that. I can't. I'm not delivering the messages. I'm not taking them back. Well, I said, well, I'm not moving. I think it was 63 where you hurt your shoulder and then you went into wrestling during the year of a football season when you've hurt your shoulder thinking how does the club let you do that like well they didn't it was the money i was getting a hundred pound a wrestle <laughs> and they were paying me 10 pound a game and then i'd go up wednesday up to sydney and wrestle them at the sydney stadium up there so you're getting 200 pound a week and they're paying you 10 pound they're going to sack me as captain and do this i went in the committee the committee room just up here and sid Coburn is sitting at the end of the table and he said uh, Murray, the, the club's not very happy with you wrestling. So I said, I give my life to Collingwood every Saturday afternoon. Yeah. I go there and it's a joke, this wrestling business, but they but pay £100 a night. You pay 10 and that's where I'll be next Saturday night. <laughs> now, if you want to sack me as a captain or sack me as a player, just do it. your hands, put your hands up there, now look at this, now this is what Ruckman or Ruckman sent our ball Yeah, that, that's what days. you finish up with. You didn't yeah. think about ever getting them straightened up? <laughs> no, you, it's, you just, look I used to bind them, I broke my hand there and uh, I just bound it up, didn't even have it put in plaster because if you did that you wouldn't be able to play for another five, six weeks, yeah, so, right. so just stuck a bit of tape around it, but that, that's football, God, yeah. you'd do it all again wouldn't you? Well, 
mate. Uh, it's been an honour and a privilege. I know that uh, you did a lot for Collingwood for nothing, but on behalf of uh, Get Wines Direct, here's the President's selection. I reckon it suits you. Maybe yes. if we got that President to pay that other four quid, you would have been at Collingwood for another ten years. I probably would have stayed too, but I've tried this wine. It's a very good wine. Beautiful, and hope you enjoy it. Yeah, it's but great. But thanks again for joining us. Thank you very much, Tony. Thanks, Buzz. From one premiership hero to another, Nathan Brown is still with me in the studio. Last year's grand final lost Brownie. How much of a factor will that be in this game on Friday night? Yeah, um, I guess it'll be in the minds of, of the boys and, and because it's the last time they played them. But um, this year it's all been, it's all been about um, the here and now and, and where we're going towards this year. So I don't think it'll be much of a factor. Uh, Geelong had a bit of a disappointing loss last weekend against Adelaide. How much do you think that'll affect them? Not really. It'll probably make them train a lot harder and um, really iron a few things out and they'll come up really well against us. Uh, it wouldn't affect them. They're, they're, they know where they want to go, a bit like us, um, and, and they'll, they'll come out really hard. Big difference between the Geelong side of last year and this year. What do you think? Um, yeah, just I guess some of the new blood, the personnel um, going through, some of the older guys. I think um, uh, Lingy's gone, so um, he is a massive part of the club. So they're, they're young and they're just finding themselves, and, and, and I guess they'll come good. What do you think the secret is to keeping Hawkins and J-Pod quiet? Yeah, well, my, my philosophy is a straight bat early, and um, in the first 10 minutes, first quarter, you knuckle down very hard on them. You, you starve them of... of even, even just the smallest thing of a handball and you really get them out of the game and then it tends to work the rest of the game out for you. Our team's uh, been a little unsettled. We've had a lot of players coming in and out. How do you think that affects the team week to week? Yeah, it does. Uh, it, um, it affects the makeup. I know um, with the, the back six, if that changes from week to week, um, you sort of learn how to play with certain players and, and what you need to do to, to get the job done. And, and when that changes a lot, it does get, get you unsettled. But um, we're, our team's starting to settle now, and, and we're starting to get a few, a few of our veterans back and that, and I think it'll really help us going forward. Uh, hopefully this week we get Darren Jolly back and Daisy. That'll be great as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, um, Daisy, Daisy will be great to have back. Um, um, hopefully he's, he's flying high and, and running hard as ever, and, and Joel um, will steady the ship in the midfield. Very good. Mate, thanks for coming in and joining us tonight. Good luck with your recovery from everyone, all the fans, and uh, thanks for coming in again. Thanks, man. Thank you, and join us next week on The Club.